The focus of this lesson is to understand how different ports provide connection to the various peripheral devices that you can connect to a computer system. Now we're going to go beyond the normal terms like USB and we're going to delve a bit more deeper into how the technology actually works. So as usual, let's start by looking at some key terms. So do pause the video and drop these down. You need to know what the clock cycle actually does and what it actually means. Clock speeds are measured in terms of gigahertz or in older times megahertz and I think in the future terahertz. And this vibrational frequency of the clock which sends out pulses along the control bus actually allows the CPU and the various different devices to sync their operations. We're going to be looking at overclocking, changing the clock speed of a system to a value higher than the recommended. We're going to be discussing cache memory at some point. We're going to be looking at what makes a CPU core, what is meant by dual core and quad core and eventually octa core. We're going to be looking at the various different ports like USB and we're going to be looking at asynchronous serial data transmission, single wire being used to transmit bits of data asynchronously and then moving on to HDMI and then high bandwidth digital copy protection which is a part of HDMI. Now according to the syllabus you need to look at three main types of computer ports, USB ports, HDMI ports and the legacy VGA ports and we're going to be looking at all of that in this lesson. But before we begin, you need to understand what computer ports are all about. Now, ports in olden times used to give you access to ships. Pearl and goods used to be taken in and out of ships this way. And that's exactly what computer ports are. They allow information to be sent into a computer system and out of a computer system. So input and output devices are connected to a computer via ports. The interaction of the ports with connected input and output is controlled by the control unit in your CPU. Now let's start by looking at USB ports. The USB port, or better known as the Universal Serial Bus Port, is an asynchronous serial data transmission method, which basically means that there's a single wire that sends data one after the other, and the synchronization needs to occur based on the clock of an actual device, rather than the order in which the data is sent. Now the USB cable itself consists of four wire shielded cable with two wires for power and earth and two wires used for data transmission. When a device is plugged into a computer using one of the USB ports, the computer automatically detects that device is present. And this is normally due to a small change in the voltage level on the data signal wires in the cable itself. The device is automatically recognized and the appropriate device drivers are then loaded up so the computer and the device can communicate effectively. Now if a new device is detected, the computer will look for that device driver which matches the device and normally this happens by connecting to a server online somewhere or maybe looking onto the files on a secondary storage device like a hard disk drive or SSD. And of course if it's not found, then the user is prompted to download the appropriate software by either connecting to the manufacturer's website or third-party sites. Now USB is an international standard, it's widely acceptable but it does have its pros and cons and you've got to be aware of all of them. Now the pros of a USB system is that devices plugged into the computer systems are automatically detected. The connections generally can only fit one way which prevents incorrect connections being made and of course it being an industry standard means there's a lot of support available to users and there are a lot of different types of data transmission rates which are supported and newer USB standards are backward compatible with older USB standards so that means your older devices don't become obsolete. However the cons are that the present transmission rate is limited to less than 500 megabits per second so it's not very fast and the maximum cable length is presently about 5 meters. Now one of the challenges USB has is that there are so many old standards as you can see in the picture on screen and at some point in time in the future all of these are going to be very difficult to support so older devices will eventually become obsolete. Now the next port we are going to be looking at is a legacy port and this is a VGA or a video graphics array port which was introduced at the end of the 1980s. Now VGA supported 640 by 480 pixel resolution which was similar to a TV screen of that time. Now it could output to monitors as well and generally these monitors used to be the old-fashioned cathode ray tube type monitors. 
it could handle a refresh rate of up to 60 hertz which is basically 60 frames a second and there were only 16 different colors available at that resolution now if you could reduce the resolution to 200 by 320 then it could support up to 256 colors the technology was generally analog and it's being phased out but you can still find these monitors around at various places where bespoke software has been created for those systems now think about old submarines and warships and power plants and all of those things these have been made in the 80s and they still are in operation now so the technology is still around but it is eventually going to be phased out now there are different versions which then over time increase the resolution like super vga and extended graphics array or xga and if you do a deep dive into vga you'll probably find that there are hundreds of alternatives available for these now these have all been superseded by HDMI and HDMI is a high definition multimedia interface HDMI that's basically what it stands for and HDMI ports allow output both audio and video from a computer it's basically the digital replacement for the older VGA standard now modern HD TVs probably the television that you have in your own home will have the following features an HDMI or multiple HDMI ports and these allow the TV to use widescreen formats like 16 to 9 aspect ratio, very cinematic. The screens use a greater number of pixels, typically 1920 times 1080 and obviously 4K is coming and eventually 8K. The screens have a faster refresh rate up to 120 hertz or 120 frames per second and the range of colors is extremely large. Some companies end up claiming millions, 4 million different color variation or true color and all sorts of combinations in between. Now modern HDTVs require more data which has to be received at a much faster rate, normally 10 gigabits per second. That means that we need increased bandwidth and HDMI provides that, making it possible to supply all the necessary data for high quality sound and visual effects. Of course, with the advent of streaming that presents its own challenges, think about Netflix streams. How do you stream 10 gigabits of information? raw so a compression plays a huge part in online streaming to support the hdmi equivalent standards but here we're only interested in the hdmi port and one of the key elements for hdmi and the reason for its success is hdcp now hdmi can afford some protection against piracy since it uses something called high bandwidth digital copy protection hdcp and that's basically an authentication protocol which is built into hdmi so if you've got a Blu-ray player, the player will check the authentication key of the device it is sending data to, such as an HDTV. It can then, based on that authentication, allow a handshake to take place and then transmission of data begins. So think back to how SSL and TLS works. In particular TLS, it uses similar technology. If you place a copier in between your Blu-ray player and the HDTV, the authentication will eventually fail and data transmission will stop. So let's compare HDMI and VGA, especially the pros and cons of each. So do pause this summary screen and jot these down. HDMIs are basically the current standard for modern TVs and monitors and they allow for a very fast data transfer rate and of course improved security which helps prevent piracy. However, not a very robust connection, easy to break, limited cable length to retain a good signal and there are currently five cable connection standards for HDMI which can cause confusion. Now the pros of VGA are that it's a lot more simpler technology and there's only one standard available. It's easy to split the signal and connect a number of devices from one source which is very difficult with HDMI due to the security elements built in. The connection itself is very secure but it's old and outdated analog technology. It's easy to bend the pins, so it's not very robust either. And the cables must be of a very high quality to ensure you get the best experience. Now that's it for today. You should be able to identify three common ports. You should be able to explain how USB actually works. How does HDMI work? What is meant by HDCP? You should be able to describe VGA ports. You should be able to list the benefits and disadvantages of HDMI and the benefits and disadvantages of VGA ports as well. 
If you can't answer any of these questions, feel free to connect with me and I'll be happy to explain it further or you can simply rewind the video and just have a look at the content all over again. I'll see you in the next one.